honored to have everybody here today. And um, to not belabor it, I just want to introduce the mayor, Jackie Biskupski. She's going to come up and give a proclamation for the library. Well, um, first I want to start out um, by sharing a little information about this anniversary. So for over 120 years, the Salt Lake City Public Library has been a repository of culture, art, and knowledge for anyone walking through its doors. Our libraries serve as community classrooms. Whether you're learning to read, looking for a job, curious about the world, or simply in need of a good book. The library offers open access to anyone walking through the doors. No matter how technology may change, our library will innovate and grow, standing the test of time to maintain its creed of bringing people together. Here's to another 120 years for the Salt Lake City Public Library and to you, congratulations for all your hard work over these many, many years. Whereas the public, whereas the Free Public Library of Salt Lake City was founded on February 14th, 1898, with 11,910 volumes housed on the top floor of the city and county building, and whereas over the last 120 years, the City Library has grown to serve all corners of Salt Lake City with beloved libraries located in the neighborhoods of Poplar Grove, Sugar House, the Foothills, Rose Park, the Avenues, Glendale, and Marmalade. And whereas boasting a collection of more than 750,000 items, the City Library serves as a dynamic civic resource offering free and open access to information, materials, and services that advances knowledge, spurs creativity, and builds community to all who pass through its doors. And whereas technology has changed rapidly in its 120-year history, the City Library continues to develop creative, innovative, and engaging ways to serve Salt Lake City's 21st century information needs. And whereas the City Library serves as a vital gathering place, a community classroom where everyone is welcome, fostering the exchange of ideas and civic discourse, and whereas the City Library has stood the test of time, demonstrating its position as a foundational institution in Salt Lake City. Now, therefore, I, Jacqueline M. Biskupski, Mayor of Salt Lake City, do hereby proclaim February 14, 2018, as Salt Lake City Public Library Day, and encourage all residents to join me in celebrating the, city's, the city library's history of enriching lives for the past 120 years, and to look forward to the next century of innovation and learning. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Biskupski, very much for the recognition of Salt Lake City Public Library Day and for your kind words. And I'd also like to thank our uh, Salt Lake City Council Vice Chair, Chris Wharton, for being uh, here with us today. Um, unfortunately, the mayor said everything I was going to say, so I don't, have a, I don't have anything left to add to that, but I'll, maybe I'll extemporaneous uh, make some comments here. So we are here to celebrate the 120th birthday of the Salt Lake City Public Library. Over the last 12 decades, a lot has changed, but throughout that time, the City Library has been a constant presence for the educational and cultural needs of the people of Salt Lake City. In 1898, Salt Lake City had approximately 52,000 residents and today we have nearly 200,000, with over a million calling the greater metro area their home. The last 20, 120 years have involved rapid growth, constant change, 
And it's a rate of, it's a rate of change that continues to accelerate. Uh, the futurist Michael Edson uh, calls this rate of change a deeply weird world that we're living in now. And it's a world that will challenge us in ways that we literally cannot imagine. But in this deeply weird and rapidly changing world, everyone in Salt Lake City can be assured that the public library continues to play a vital role in supporting the health and vibrancy of this community. Now, when the library first opened, it was known as the Free Public Library of Salt Lake City. And as Mayor Raskupski pointed out, it was housed right across the street there on the top floor of the city county building, right from where we stand. And I'm pretty sure that our first director, Annie Chapman, could not predict everything that this library would become and what Salt Lake City residents would need from a public library more than a century after her tenure. But Ms. Chapman and the other founders of the Free Public Library of Salt Lake City did foresee the importance of building the library on a foundation of timeless values. Those values are free, open, and equitable access, not only to information, but to spaces, to tools, and I think most importantly, to people. Our founders had a deep belief that access provided a path for all to self-direct, to learn, to grow, and to develop, a path to fully participate in our democracy and in our economy and fully participate in our community. And that vision guides and inspires us today. 120 years later, the library continues to be this unique and vital space in our community where everyone is welcome to discover, to explore, to learn, to grow and collaborate, and to engage with their neighbors over issues of the day. We continue to be the manifested expression of a community's belief in its own potential and in its own ability to learn and to evolve, to envision and create a better future together, and to collectively, collectively address our shared challenges. I stand before you today and I assert that the values and purpose that gave rise to the library in 1898 remain inviolate, remain alive, and remain highly relevant to the residents of Salt Lake City these 120 years later. The ways in which we breathe life into those values, the ways in which we bring purpose to them and serve our patrons have changed, of course. We still have a collection that promotes learning and discovery, but that collection has evolved beyond books to promote learning in new ways, providing access to creative maker spaces, such as the one that we have right here, um, to discovery kits that include sewing machines and telescopes and laptops and hotspots that can be checked out and help to bridge the digital divide. We provide reliable high-speed broadband access, certainly a necessity for full, full participation in democracy and society and in our economy in 2018 for those who otherwise lack access to that vital resource. And we continue to improve access to all by removing unnecessary barriers, such as the removal of late fines that created not just a barrier, but an inequitable barrier to library use. So looking forward, I'm very confident that the library is on a path for another 120 years of continued vitality, meaningful service to everyone in our community. Because regardless of the unforeseeable changes that every organization is going to have to navigate in our rapidly changing world, the bedrock of the, library's, uh, bedrock of the library has been our values and our staff. And our staff are a cadre of smart, compassionate, and dedicated people who are so deeply committed to the success of every patron that we serve. So with that, it's my great pleasure that I'm able to share this day with you and mark an incredible milestone for the public library and for the people of Salt Lake City. Thank you all for being here, and I would like to now invite up to the podium Chris Wharton, Vice Chair of our Salt Lake City Council. Chris. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to be here celebrating this, um, this institution in one of the most beautiful buildings in our city. Um, as was said, our whole library system is a wonderful combination of new and old, a connection to the future and a connection to the past. Uh, my district, District 3, is a great example of that. Um, I'm fortunate to have two libraries in District 3. Um, the Sweet Branch, which is in the avenues, and the Marmalade Branch, which is our newest um, library in the library system. Um, the Marmalade Branch, it's hard to, uh, I think that our earliest librarians would have a hard time even imagining what you can do now at the library. Um, in the Marmalade Branch, for example, 
It hosts a creative lab where uh, patrons can uh, access technology to make music, print 3D objects, edit films, or apply for jobs. Um, it hosts Mocha, a locally owned coffee shop, and it has a huge meeting space that's become a centerpiece um, and a heart for that community. Uh, the Sweet Branch, on the other hand, uh, has served the avenues for more than 30 years. It opened in 1985, uh, and it's a great representation of the typical neighborhood branch. It's folded neatly into the neighborhood. It's walkable by families and students, um, and it's decorated with um, art from the community. Um, and uh, that's where we have a lot of our, um, uh, where we have our avenues council meetings, um, and it's great to visit that every month. But all of our branches in the city are homes. They're homes for our community. They're houses for knowledge, and they're the place uh, places where I know I can always go to get my favorite books and meet my neighbors. So thank you very much for being here. Happy birthday to the city library. So now I'd like to invite up one of our librarians, Cherry Willis. Uh, she's going to lead us in singing Happy Birthday. And while she does that, we're going to try to light 120 candles on fire. <laughs> Fire marshal is advised. Now, happy birthday is a wish, and it only comes true if you sing with me. So I have hopefully pitched this at a relatively decent pitch, and we're all going to start, OK? Mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, city life. 